Julia Ayers is no longer vegan. Not only that, she thinks it is dangerous. I'm not at all familiar with her. She's got like a good number of subscribers. I did scan through her videos. It looks like she has some like what I ate today's vegan, what I ate today's, which I think I'm going to do next. Just go through a bunch of channels I've never seen before and look at their like vegan what I eat in a day videos. That might be fun. Trying to film this in a hostile dorm room is a hopeful endeavor to say the least. That looks like a nice dorm room, right? Am I crazy? I know I can only see part of it. I don't know. Looks cute. Wow. Life throws you in so many different directions and before you make any righteous comment for or against anything, please just... I'm getting nervous. She's doing the prayer hands like a lot. <laughs> please don't say the universe told you to eat eggs. I can't go through that again. I believe in veganism morally without a doubt in my brain and I will continue to cook vegan food when I am at home without a doubt. It's the way that I love to cook. It's the way I'm used to cooking. It's the way I know cooking and I do feel my best when I can fuel my body properly on a plant-based diet. This will change eventually as I really do want a homestead one day have my own chickens, have goats, and I can make my own goat cheese and have my own eggs. I swear to God I was gonna say that. Either the universe told her to eat eggs or homesteading. Don't I have a video called like homesteading does it again? <laughs> homesteading making all the vegans eat meat that they bought from Trader Joe's who bought it from a factory farm. I will just throw this in real quick for those who are unfamiliar. I do not believe it's wrong to eat certain animal products or to use certain animal products. If you make a fucking bracelet from your cat's like hairballs. I don't see any issue with that. I mean, I see some issues with it, but ethically seems okay. Similarly, if you have some backyard hens and you eat their eggs, I don't see anything inherently wrong with that. People will argue that, well, they're not healthy unless you feed them the eggs or the eggshells or something. I can't find any information verifying that. And I've heard from many who rear backyard hens that their hens will leave their unfertilized eggs alone like they don't care. My point is it's a nuanced thing and it's worth discussing because you can potentially rescue a hen and eat that hen's eggs. Some people do do this. Most people do not. Most people, vast, vast, vast majority, get their eggs produced via cruelty. And even like getting goats, I think she said goats specifically, like that's possible, a little more difficult, but it is possible, I think, to do that ethically. And whenever there's financial incentive, there is incentive to cut corners. And even if you're like, I'm never going to sell, well, now you have all these animals to take care of, and that's very expensive. And so maybe there is at some point pressure to sell, but also is it a million times better than factory farming, even if you do end up selling these animal byproducts? Yes, very likely yes. But what does this have to do with veganism being dangerous? I don't know. Maybe I should watch the video. And I believe in consuming plant or animal-based products when they are ethical. So whether you have your own homestead or you're buying from a local farmer, I do believe in that. Or maybe you or your partner likes to hunt. So first local farmer, that does not guarantee anything. I think that is just an easy out, you know, tell yourself that, oh, it's ethical because I bought from a farmer's market. Mm. A few years ago, I wanted to visit the best farm I could find. Factory farming was clearly wrong, so I wanted to instead find a farm that represented an ethical and humane way to raise animals for food. The award-winning farm was nestled in a landscape of bucolic green grass and rolling hills. Despite the pastoral scenery, I found that the birds were in worse health than those of any other farm I'd been to. I saw many cases of Merix, a highly contagious disease that had led to partial blindness in many of them, swollen abdomen, some with over a pound of fluid buildup in their less than five pound body, and lice. Like the hens and factory farms, many of them suffered and died from cancer, stuck eggs, reproductive tract infections, and other ailments that result from artificial breeding for hyperactive reproductive systems that make them lay unnatural numbers of eggs. When I visited the farm, I sincerely wanted to believe that these animals had good lives, but the evidence just wasn't there to support it. It wasn't as bad as the factory farms I visited, but it still wasn't the kind of life I'd want to live myself. Also, sustainability, right? It does not matter if you're buying factory farm or local. It's still not great for the environment to be buying animal products over plants. Or maybe you or your partner likes to hunt and as long as it's done morally and ethically i do believe that that is just totally fine and it's how we've lived on this earth for ever i'm not going to go into detail on hunting because i have a whole video on that there is some nuance there but overall no hunting is not 
ethical you are ending a life because you want to eat meat that no is it better than factory farming yes but almost anything is better than factory farming oh i just saw this with awareness and consciousness to the land and animals all life deserves respect again a very easy out but if you think about it for more than two seconds does that really make it better and how easy to say well i killed the cow but i respect the cow well you can't ask the cow even before you kill them you can't ask them hey is it okay as long as i respect you <laughs> i know some people will be like it's never ethical to kill an animal and you know i agree but at the same time it's like we've done this for hundreds of thousands of years like throughout our entire world history animals have killed other animals to survive please don't ever use the we've done it forever that supports so many awful things <laughs> please don't do that um but that is really interesting so she said it's totally ethically fine to go and hunt but also yeah i know it's not <laughs> It's just we've done it for so long that like, yeah. Who am I to say that it's wrong or you, you shouldn't do that? It's actually how I would like to live. But being in a kind of Western growing, Western society growing up, I was able to make the choice not to eat meat. And it was a choice that I made when I was 11 years old because the reality oh. of animals having to die just like shocked me. I don't think I ever had that realization. I don't remember ever as a child going like, oh, this is animals. Like it was just like, yeah, it's animals. Okay. I wish I could say I cared, but no, I don't ever remember caring about eating animals until I was much older. Cut out all animal products and then was vegan from the time I was about 17 years old and I am now 24. I'll be 20, turning 25 uh, in a month. You're not a real vegan. You're not a real, like whatever. And no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I didn't make this decision because I watched a documentary. I made it because it was true to my heart and true to my soul, and it will continue to be true to my heart and true to my soul. I can't really speak on any eco environmental problems when it comes to the plant-based diet for or against because I'm just not educated enough to speak on that. And I'm also not a naturopath. I'm not a doctor. I can't tell you how you should eat. Oh God, did you say naturopath first before doctor? Oh no. But look, I appreciate her saying she doesn't know about the sustainability environmental issues. It, it's always good. You know, that is like one of the best traits to have is to be able to say like, I don't know. It is so obnoxious when people pretend to know things and then educate others <laughs> based on this lie that they know things or what you should eat or what's right for you all i know is me my own intuition my own body that said it's also rather irritating and rather lazy right this position that like well i'm just doing what's best for me and i'm just listening to my body it is lazy it's a non-thinking position and i wonder if at the heart of these type of people's you know worldview is just that fear of actual ethics and actual sustainability. You know, it's it's so much easier to not learn about these things and to not have to have a position and just to say, oh, well, I don't know, you do you and I do me. I have struggled with my health over the last like eight months or so, um, which I think primarily had to do with a lot of stress. But in that, I was actually stressed because I couldn't fuel my body properly at points. And if you've been hanging out with me for a while, you know that I've suffered with an eating disorder, orthorexia for like, damn, I don't even know how long. I didn't even realize it was a problem for most of the time that I was orthorexic. I will say eating disorders. I do have a video. It's a review of a fantastic book on veganism and eating disorders. So I talk about that in a lot more detail there, but certainly there are situations where someone's veganism can fuel their eating disorder. And so being vegan or even vegetarian doesn't make sense in certain recovery scenarios. AKA some people use veganism, vegetarianism as a way to restrict, but not everyone. And there are vegans and vegetarians who are harmed by the system, which is overwhelmingly anti-vegan and vegetarian for people recovering from eating disorders. It's a really, really great book. Highly recommend it. While traveling, it's extremely, extremely difficult to be vegan. And it's not true in every single country that I've been to. Like for instance, Spain, super easy to be vegan. Okay, so is she not in school? I should have guessed that. It wouldn't fit with the whole aesthetic, with the whole persona to be going to university, right? But then you go a little bit more north to France and it's 
so difficult. <laughs> I've been to Germany, super easy to be vegan. And then you go a little bit more south to Italy, and it's extremely difficult. I've heard different things from different people, but consistently I have heard France. Fuck that place. <laughs> and please, if any of you have some positive experiences there or in certain areas, obviously France is not just like France, this is France. It's like the United States. It's just the United States. Portland, Memphis, Tennessee, they're the same. But really, if you have any positive experiences or nice places, like nice restaurants, whatever stores to shop at, please do leave them below. Not for me, I'm not going to France. I've never left the US. Is that sad? I tried so, so hard to keep my vegan diet when I was traveling, but it just wasn't possible all the time with language barriers. You know, mm. pizzas would come out with cheese or pasta would come out with Parmesan or I'd be in Asia and although I'd say no egg, they'd put egg in my pad thai and you know, it's just, at some point I just had to give it up. Like I just had to release control because I realized that this control was making me anxious and it was making yeah. me anxious because I wanted to like share this vegan journey. I wanted to share vegan Aww. food with you guys online and it's what I love. Well, that is not at all what I expected. There's a lot more to this video. I don't know, there may be some health stuff. That's what I was expecting by the title, why I think it's dangerous. But I hope what she's saying is it's dangerous in these situations where you are traveling and you literally don't have enough food, right? Like no one should be subsisting on bread for long periods of time, right? Um, and also the stress and she has this channel where she wants to post these things like that's not good for anyone. So um, yeah, I feel for her. That sucks. And while I can imagine someone saying, well, you just make it work, you know, you just okay, if you accidentally get stuff fine, eat it, but you don't intentionally order non vegan stuff. And okay, that may work for some people. But I think a lot of people, like she said, are going to have higher levels of stress and anxiety. And at some point, it's going to be better for that person to just go, okay, I'm just gonna have to be more lax, right? Like until I get in a more stable location, I'm just gonna have to be more lax. You said no cheese or no eggs, so just like send it back. I have a really hard time wasting food when I'm passing people that can't feed themselves. When I Aww. walk by impoverished people, and I have the privilege to send a pizza back because it has cheese on it or the pad thai has eggs in it. Like I just, that's it's so wrong inside of my heart. Like, Aww. I just can't. I know I was making fun of the prayer hands and I will always make fun of the prayer hands, but she seems to actually be living this it's not a persona for her. Like she actually is compassionate. And that that is that is so sweet. She seems like a really nice person. And I agree, even if there aren't starving people, say something sure, like nicely, like, hey, you know, this, I said no cheese and this has cheese or give it to someone else, right? But um, yeah, I, I agree with her. It doesn't make sense to just waste perfectly good food. And all of that led me into a cystic acne, high anxiety, just not great state and I saw a naturopath at the beginning of this year which was really really helpful for me. Have we talked about the naturopath to carnivore pipeline? Not really carnivore but like you know adjacent right animal products are healing that sort of shit. How many times now have we seen this right? Someone's not feeling well goes to a naturopath they're told to eat meat again. The reason I do feel okay more so eating cheese and eggs from this environment where I am currently Namibia is because they don't hide it like there are farmers walking up and down the highway with their like 20 cows just like eating dead grass and there are chickens in the backs of restaurants and I don't know, it just seems like a lot more wholesome and I can see where the things are coming from. So yes, you may see some of the aspects, but you're not seeing the slaughtering, I would imagine. I imagine she would have a much different view if she saw these animals being slaughtered. And also, please, if she's watching this or anyone else, um, if you happen to live there or any country you live in, look at the laws surrounding animal welfare, because in a lot of countries, there are none. So it looks like Namibia does have something called fan meat, but this is more for selling to international markets. This is not something all farmers have to meet. And these standards encourage 
like animal welfare. What does that mean exactly? The farming standards include provision for animal welfare fare through production, transport, and slaughter. This works with the country's wider strategy of moving towards the export of value-added products rather than live animals. This evolution will reduce the long-distance transport of animals for slaughter, a recognized and major animal welfare problem. True, but that's not the only problem with commodifying animals. They do require extensive grazing, but of course grazing doesn't mean ethical either. Also, I'm not talking about like people who are starving, right? And only have access to grains that don't provide all of the nutrients they need and they need meat to be healthy, right? That is not what we're talking about. Even in her case, uh, she is choosing to travel to this place, right? But I do feel for her. Again, you know, she is in this situation and she's traveling for whatever reason. She's already obviously still upset with not being able to maintain her veganism. And so it's hard, it's hard for us not to then see what we're doing as okay. Like, look, I see the farmers and I see the cows. Okay, it's cool. It's not factory farming. It's hard to go, well, you know, yeah, maybe it's better then, but you know, it, it's not great. I will say I do not believe that a vegan diet is sustainable for every single person. Again, people may hate me for saying that, but I really, really do not. We have to think about our DNA and our ancestry, which is, you know, the same thing. You are DNA, and when you eat a diet that is for you, then you're going to most likely live a long, happy, healthy life with not a lot of health complications. I was with her until the for you. I don't believe there's any, like, perfect diet for... <laughs> people. I don't know. It sounds like you're getting into like blood type diets and what's the Eric Berg, the hor hormonal type diets, you know, at that point. And that's all nonsense. But certainly there are people with multiple food allergies that make it hard to be vegan. I don't think helping animals is about being a martyr. And I don't ever want to encourage that. You know, I, I don't ever want to be the person who's like, okay, yeah, you're traveling in a country. It's really hard to be vegan, but like, okay, just eat bread. You're there for a few weeks. Just eat bread. Deal with it. Similarly, oh, okay, you have soy and almond and peanut, just all the nut allergies. Okay, you can still eat other legumes, right? That ain't me. That said, there will be people who will do that and can do that and will be fine doing that, right? Like a lot of these kind of personal lifestyle changes, even if they are for like the greater good, right? Even if they are for ethical reasons, our ability to maintain them, I think has a lot to do with our own awareness of our limitations. So I really applaud her for realizing that this was not working for her instead of just continuing to be so anxious and malnourished. But also there's no like perfect diet for everyone. <laughs> We've got to get away from that. Just because I'm healthy on a vegan diet doesn't mean my body was like made for veganism. I'm sure I would be just as healthy on a balanced omnivorous diet or even a balanced low carb diet or even a balanced low fat diet, not super low. You know, I think you get into issues there, especially for women, but a 20% to 30%, you know, fat vegan diet. Sure. I'm sure I could be healthy on that diet. I'd fucking hate it, <laughs> but I'm sure I'd be healthy. And when you're not fueling your body in a way that is optimal for your unique body, you're going to have health complications because your genes will get, the negative genes inside of you, which all of us have, will get expressed. Not quite how that works, but okay, I, I see what she's saying. It's called epigenetics. It's like genetic effects that are triggered by environmental factors. Even that is like not a great description, but yeah. So when I saw my naturopath, for instance, she told me that I was, it was great for me to intuitively not eat like red meats or a large portion of meat because my genetics will be expressed with high cholesterol and more likelihood of obesity, heart disease, and all of these factors. Okay, hopefully she's saying for everyone, right? Did she mean like she did some sort of testing and then told her that, oh, okay, for you, yes, your intuition was correct because that is so silly. Unless she was doing like real doctor stuff, <laughs> right? There are people who are at super high risk for heart attacks, etc. But somehow I don't think that's what was going on there. Oh goodness. Everyone should assume that if they're eating lots of red meat, they are putting themselves at higher risk for heart attacks are having high rates of anxiety, depression, acne, painful periods, weight loss, like any of these factors, please go see a naturopath because there is something no. wrong. There's something wrong. No. We should not live a life of high, high anxiety and a lot of vegans that their body just is not doing well on a vegan diet 
it will be expressed in anxiety and depression. Sources, please. Again, I just really hate this idea that there is like a perfect diet for you and you've got to keep searching for it. You know, it's like the perfect health thing that leads a lot of these vegans to leave veganism because they don't feel like they're healthy enough on a vegan diet because they're aging. <laughs> their bodies don't work as well because they're aging, right? It's going to happen on any diet. Not saying there can't be problems related to veganism. There certainly can. I talk about them all the time on this channel and trying to mitigate those by eating a healthy, balanced, supplemented vegan diet. But if you're searching for this perfect combination of foods or something, like you're never going to find it. You're searching in vain. You're going to make yourself crazy. You're going to make yourself orthorexic. And this idea that like, well, there are some people who do benefit from eating lots of red meat or something. It's just a terrible message to put out there. She didn't say that, but that's what I got from that. Go see a naturopath and get your blood tested, get your DNA tested, see what diet is actually right for you. Maybe I totally misunderstood it. I hope I did. I'm saying this out of love of humans. And if you are worried about the ethical implications of a animal-based or eating animal products, then I think the only way to really move through that is your connection with the divine power. Prayer over your meals is really important and there's a beautiful prayer that I've heard that I really, really love and I've been doing a lot, especially as I have been eating eggs and cheese recently, is just sitting over my meal and saying, I acknowledge the life that, ha that had or has to live to create this meal. I appreciate it and I love it and I will use this meal for fuel to do something even more beautiful and powerful in this world. Again, I am sympathetic and uh, I understand the difficulty. We just can't say to ourselves like, yeah, this is not ideal. This is not great. Like we have to surround it in flowery language to make ourselves feel better. I really despise promoting this respect the animal shit. Nine times out of 10 people are not doing what she's doing, right? Where she is intending, hopefully it's sincere, you know, to, to be vegan when she is at home, when it's easier for her to be vegan and this is a short-term thing you know, then like I can understand it to some degree, but no, people hear this and they go, okay, cool. As long as I say this prayer over my food, then it's fine. Then even in her situation, like she's choosing to travel and she's eating animals as a result, like animals are dying so that she can travel. Yeah. I don't want to be that vegan, but like, that's, that's what it is, right? Don't code it in pseudo spiritual nonsense, please. Just please be honest. Like it's, you seem like such a nice person. You really do. And it seems like you're really trying to think about these issues, but I think you're also pulling the wool over your eyes a little bit because you don't, you don't want to be perfectly honest with yourself. And maybe if you were, maybe you would say, well, you know, maybe I don't need to travel actually. And maybe this actually isn't the best use of my time. You know, she said, I'll go on to do great things. Is traveling the world eating me? Is that, is that part of that? Maybe it is. I don't know. Is there ever a time where fooling ourselves leads to good things, leads to better things? I don't know. We are animals and in the animal kingdom, some animals eat other animals. Having listened to her for 15 minutes now, she's smarter than that. Like she knows that's bullshit. <laughs> Again, she's just fooling herself to make herself feel better. If that were really true, she would not feel so bad because clearly she still feels bad about eating animals. She would not feel that if she really believed that, well, we're animals too, so we can kill and eat animals. Who is that psychopath guy? I, I watched a debate with Joey Carbstrong and like, yeah, he was consistent. <laughs> I'll give him that, right? He's like, yeah, animals eat other animals and I don't care. Yeah, I eat animals. I do not care. She obviously does care. So she should know that there is a difference between humans who can be moral or immoral choosing not to eat animal products and a lion eating because he's a lion and he doesn't understand that maybe there are better choices. <laughs> maybe grass would be more ethical. <laughs> Why doesn't he just go to his local grocery store? I'm sure they have tofu. I'm sure they at least have some dry beans and rice. A lot of people I know will use the vegan plant-based diet as a way to eliminate foods that may not be seen as healthy. And it's almost a like moral way to feed into your eating disorder. 
because you're like, oh, well, I can't eat that because I'm vegan. So it makes you feel like you're, you know, above or you're doing something right, but in actuality, you are just scared of cheese or you are just scared of eggs or you are just scared of the fat on that steak. We're just always looking for a new diet or a new trend or a new thing to get on when we do have an eating disorder. And most women have suffered with an eating disorder eating disorder at some point in their life. Okay, like most of these segments, I'm with her until I'm not. No, most most women have not suffered from an eating disorder. The vast majority of people have never and will never have an eating disorder. Body dysmorphia is a huge, huge thing for women and we're always trying to find something to make us prettier or make us thinner. Maybe this is nitpicking, but I think we really need to be careful with our words there saying like this is a huge thing for people. Again, body dysmorphia, the vast majority of people, the vast majority of women do not have body dysmorphia. It is terrible for those who have it. I'm glad we have people speaking about it um, and getting the word out so that maybe those who don't know they have it, maybe they learn they do and they can seek help. But I don't like this fear mongering. I don't think she's trying to do that, but ultimately I think she is. Everyone has it. Everyone has an eating disorder. Everyone has body dysmorphia. No, these are actual conditions. Most people do not have them. And I just want to tell you that the most beautiful you will ever be is in your highest expression. And that is living a life that is authentic to you. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. Please just be respectful and kind no matter what side that you're on, because that's how people will hear you most. You are respectful and kind. People are more receptive to listening. Very well said. And uh, yeah, I think that's all my thoughts on that. Again, she seems like a really, really sweet person. I'm so glad this was not a, you know, red meat is healing. <laughs> veganism is dangerous because it doesn't have red meat and eggs. And what about taurine? Guys, taurine. 42,000 components, guys. But I would love to know your thoughts, especially from those of you who travel, places you've been where it's been really easy, places you've been where it's been really difficult. I know with the Peter Dinklage one, we were talking about Croatia, and there were a few comments from people saying like, yeah, today it's a lot different, right? It's great. But, you know, years ago when they were here, here filming, like, yeah, there were fewer options for vegans and vegetarians. But yeah, leave your comments comments below and thank you so much for watching everybody please do like and subscribe and of course thank you so much to my members here on youtube and my patrons at patreon.com slash unnatural vegan i do post two exclusive videos a month for tier two members and patrons i post a vlog and also a uh, controversial video of just like whatever I want to talk about that month for last month for August. How is it September? For August, it was about uh, the Olympics and chromosome gender controversy. Thanks again, guys. New video soon. No, why do you sit like that? It never feels good. She looks very similar to this girl down here in this thumbnail. Oh, no, she doesn't. Never mind. They both have like straight middle part brown hair. So exactly the same. I don't have face blindness. I don't think they look alike.